These are all the AI features you need to know inside of Lightroom. All right, let's get started with the first AI feature within Lightroom that you need to know. And we have our photo here, and this is just a photo of me. And if we zoom in, we can see that it is quite noisy uh, because it was very dark uh, when we shot this image. Um, so let's scroll down to the detail tab. And here you can see this noise reduction tab. And if you look below it, you see manual noise reduction. This is sort of the noise reduction you had before, but the AI function is this button here. So if we press it, you get this uh, preview. And here you can choose the amount of the noise you want to do. So we are just going to leave it at 50 uh, for this, because you can see that if you scroll back, it's going to be more noise and the more the smoother is going to be. But let's keep it at 50% or 50. I don't know if that's percent because you don't want to overdo it. It's just going to look a bit too smooth. Here you can see the estimated time it's going to take to create this effect. And then you can just press enhance. And now it's going to take about 30 seconds. And you can see here under noise reduction, the noise that it is working. And it says reduce noise with AI the result will be saved as a new DNG. So it's going to create a copy of your image with the effect applied. And now you can see down here, we have two of the same photos. And if we toggle between them, you have the before, quite a lot of noise and after. I mean, it's a huge difference. <laughs> it is just such a good tool to remove noise from your image. And this was just the first AI tool inside of Lightroom that you need to know. And I highly recommend you to stay to the end of the video because the last one is my favorite and one that I use all the time and saves me so much time. But let's jump into the second one. And the next AI tool to use is going to be the Content Aware Remove. And you could say that this is sort of the Content Aware Fill function from Photoshop inside of Lightroom. So if you go up here to this uh, bandage, I guess, uh, in the middle and press that, you will have three different options and we want to use the first one, the, the content aware remove, it is what is, is what it's called. And now you get this brush, you can either change the size here on these sliders and the opacity, or you can use your scroll wheel to increase and decrease the size of it. So let's say in this image here that we want to remove this rock here, all we have to do is with the brush, paint over it, Something like that, maybe. And as you can see, Lightroom does a pretty good job of uh, filling up this uh, area. And what you can do is that you can hold down Command on Mac or uh, Control on Windows and select a custom source for this fill. So what if I hold down Command and draw, let's say, a, a square here, because this is where I want Lightroom to draw the source from you can see that it is going to do a new analysis and it is going to change a little bit. So what happens is just that you can choose where you want Lightroom to uh, draw the source from. Sort of just a content aware fill from Photoshop, but inside of Lightroom. And the next AI feature we are going to cover is the adaptive presets one. And this one is super cool. All right, so let's just take this image here and in the presets tab on the left, you can see that you have these adaptive portrait, adaptive sky, portrait deep skin and so on. And what is special about these presets is that they only affect a certain part of the image. So let's take adaptive sky for example, and we can choose for example blue drama, dark drama, and neon top tropics, storm clouds. And what is interesting about this is that if we apply blue drama, it's maybe a bit much, but let's apply that and you can see that it has applied the preset, but only to the sky. So when you apply an adaptive preset, you can go over to your uh, masks. And here you can see that it has created a mask around only the sky. And if you look at the thumbnail up here, you can see that it has done a pretty good job. It has noticed all the people, but it has missed the boat. So what you can do if it isn't perfect is that you can go in and just do adjustments to the mask and you can and uh, choose to subtract and you can subtract with a brush and you can just paint the way where you think it applied a little bit too much. And this does not only work with the sky, but it also works for portraits. So you can whiten teeth, for example, uh, smooth hair, 
uh, darken eyebrows. So these adaptive presets are super cool and fast to use if you want to uh, apply changes to just a specific uh, part of the image. And what is super interesting is that it is also possible to create these adaptive presets yourself. Which leads us smoothly into my last tip or AI feature that you need to know inside of Lightroom and that is inside of the mask. So just by going into the mask selection tab here you can see that Lightroom straight away finds uh, the different people inside of the image. So you can choose to mask, create a mask for all of the person people inside of the image or you can choose person 1, person 2 or person 3 individually. So if you want to do changes to them uh, separately. And this is just an AI that looks at your image and identifies the different parts of the image. So down here you have all the people, uh, you can choose subject and it is going to highlight those those three different people. Let's go back. You can choose sky and it's going to do a sky selection for you. And another one that is quite interesting is the range selection. Uh, and if you choose color range, you get this uh, color picker and hit now you can choose a color that you want to apply a mask to. So let's say we want to apply a mask to only the red colors of the image and if we press here it's going to create a selection on only that color of the image. And we can change and refine um, what it, how much it should include in this mask. So if we increase it you will see that it starts to bring in um, sort of the, the some of the red colors of this rock but if we bring it down it's going to be more just the boat and some of the clothes and skin tones so now you can do changes to only the red color inside of the image and you can increase the contrast bring up the shadows and even change the color temperature of that specific color and then what you can do if you scroll down a little bit you will see that you have point color and you can use the point color dropper to add samples so you can add even more colors. So let's say you have done changes to the red but you also want to include the green colors in the same mask. Then you can just choose the point color and add a color that you want to include in the same mask. So now we have added the green as well and if we press let's say somewhere around here as well. Uh, it is going to include that into the mask as well and you can see that as we choose more colors, more of the picture is going to be selected. And another thing that is interesting inside of the mask these days is that you now can even apply changes to the curves to a specific masks. So if you want to use the curves on a specific mask, you can do that as well. All right, these changes are starting to get out of hand, so let's go back a little bit. All right, so now you know how to use mocks, but what you can do is that you can create these adaptive presets, as I said before, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So let's say you have this image here and you do changes, or you wanna do some changes to the sky. And you select the sky with the sky mask, and you do your changes to it. You wanna increase the contrast. Let's say you wanna bring down the exposure a bit. Uh, bring down the blacks, you wanna, I'm just doing some quick changes here. You wanna apply a S curve to it, something like this. Let's just increase it so that uh, it gets a bit much, but. And you wanna add some saturation. Let's say we are happy with that. What you can do now is that you can create a preset out of this um, mask that you have done. So to save this as an adaptive preset, all you have to do do is go over to presets, press this plus sign and choose create preset. And now you will see that all of these are selected but we don't want that because we want to do preset for the sky so let's name it just sky uh, contrast or something. And now we are going to deselect all of these settings, all of them just like that. And we are going to select masking and mask one because this mask one is the mask that we have made of our sky so we are going to create that preset it is now going to be saved under uh, user presets here on the left and you can see it here under sky contrast so if we go to another photo let's take this one for example see the sky is kind of flat 
uh, a little bit overexposed but there are still uh, some information left in the sky so what we can do is that we can now apply our sky contrast preset and it is going to update AI settings. So what we did in our preset is that we saved an AI selected sky with changes on it. So now the AI is going to look for the sky in this photo and apply the same settings that we did on the last mask, but it's going to change uh, the selection. And now that it is done, we can select the um, mask and we can see that it has done a pretty good job. It managed to select the sky and not the person or the ground. So this means that you now can create presets that doesn't only affect the whole image but also certain parts of the image which is sick. All right and those were the AI functions that I think you need to know inside of Lightroom if you want to use it to its full potential. But before ending this video I just wanted to jump in and say thank you all for watching and subscribing. It's been crazy these past few months. Uh, a lot of new people which is so so exciting and I'm looking forward to creating more content and I hope you guys will enjoy. <laughs> oh, this feels so weird, but okay. I don't know. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs>